Yellowstone supervolcano erupted the mantle plume material. The helium isotopes give messages from the hotspot. This is volcano USGS, Yellowstone, Volcano Observatory, the latest Caldera Chronicles. As we know, they're written every week by scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution from Deborah Burkfield, research geologist, USGS. The rock outcrops and other landforms around Yellowstone National Park provide records of three cycles of explosive volcanism that occurred over the past 2.1 million years. Although no magmatic eruptions occurred for the past 70,000 years, even though we had eight eruptions since then, visitors today can still see evidence of Yellowstone's volcanic nature in the geysers, the hot springs, and areas of steaming ground that are part of Yellowstone's modern hydrothermal systems. These features are visible evidence for the large amount of heat stored deep in the subsurface. Scientists who work at Yellowstone are interested in finding physical and chemical signals from the deep magmatic system, both to better understand the nature of the system and also to monitor for possible changes. Some of that research involves collecting the collection and analysis of gas and water from thermal areas to look for chemical tracers that can be directly linked to the magma. Helium is part uh, is of this. Helium is an inert gas that is an excellent tracer of magmatic processes. There are two important isotopes of helium. Helium-3, which is stored deep in the Earth's mantle, where it was trapped during formation of the Earth, and helium-4, which is produced during radioactive decay of uranium and thorium, two elements commonly found in the Earth's crust. Helium-3 is a very rare at the Earth's surface, for example, helium-3 to helium-4 ratio in the air is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 6, or about one helium-3 atom for every million helium-4 atoms. However, magma rising from the mantle transports some of the trapped helium-3 to the surface. So we use the air ratio as a basis for comparison when we discuss the ratios in samples of gas. If gas has been stored for a long time in the Earth's crust, it will likely have very high concentrations of helium-4 relative to helium-3, and the helium-3 to helium-4 ratio will be low, giving it a smaller Ra value. In contrast, a gas sample collected from an erupting volcano will likely have more helium-3 relative to helium-4, and the ratio will be higher, meaning a larger Ra value. To simplify things, we express the Ra value of air as 1. Values much greater than 1 indicate that there is a greater proportion of helium-3, more mantle component that is, than was uh, found what is found normally in air. To put it simply, a high Ra means that the gas has a magmatic origin, a low RA means that there is not a magmatic source. Years of study of Yellowstone's thermal areas have shown that gas at several areas is closely linked to the magmatic system. Gas from a fumarole at Mud Geyser in the Mud Volcano thermal area has the highest He to, uh, 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 helium-3 to helium-4 ratio of any feature at Yellowstone, up to 17 RA. And nearby thermal areas have degassing features with RA values greater than 15. Likewise, the helium-3 to helium-4 ratios in gas from several features in the Gibbon Geyser Basin, which is basically northwest of Yellowstone Lake, uh, as you can see from the maps, the Gibbon Geyser Basin, uh, on the margin of Yellowstone's caldera are also very high, but here the maximum RA value is about 12.6. The waters in both of these thermal areas tend to be acidic with high concentrations of sulfur, and both areas have superheated fumaroles, 
where the temperatures of the gas exiting the ground is higher than the temperature of boiling water. Relative to, or actually, so it's almost like steam. Now, relatively high RA values are also found in gas outside the caldera boundary. The thermal areas at Mammoth Hot Springs in the North Park are a part of the park, and Boundary Creek in the southwest corner of the park differ greatly from the mud volcano area. Temperatures of the thermal features do not exceed boiling, and the pH of the hot springs are close to neutral. Now, in spite of the cooler nature of these areas and the distance from the main upflow of magmatic gas, there is a strong signal from the magmatic system. The RA values of thermal areas around Yellowstone Lake and other thermal features in the southeast park, part of the park are generally less than 5. These low ratios indicate more AG, uh, helium-4, which is the isotope of the gas that is stored in the rocks of the crust. Heating caused by the Yellowstone magma system has caused this form of helium to be released from the crust in abundant quantities, but the source of this gas is not the magma itself. Helium is an exceptional indicator of magmatic activity beneath the surface, but isotopes matter. Knowing whether the gas is helium-3 or helium-4 tells us the story of the origin. From the mantle and transported to the surface of magma by the magma, or from billion-year-old crustal rocks where the gas has formed by the process of radioactive decay. Yellowstone displays both forms of helium, so measuring the ratio of the two isotopes is critical to understanding its source. Now, from what we see in the map, the northern part of Yellowstone Lake, which is within the caldera boundaries, is indicated in red dots as opposed to yellow or orange. The uh, red dots are the RA ratio from 10 to 17. The orange are from 7.5 to 10. The yellow are from 5 to 7.5, you know, and white is uh, getting less, and green is about less than 2.5. So if you look at the map, you'll see that uh, the northern part of the lake, and even towards the uh, northern part above the lake, uh, and northwest of the lake, in the caldera area, are red, meaning that there's a lot of helium-3 coming out from uh, underneath, which is newer, okay? And also, uh, let's remember that the earthquakes recently uh, of the, the, super, the uh, Yellowstone supervolcano are basically around the area northwest of the park boundary, but just because it's outside of the park boundary does not mean that it's not part of the supervolcano. We know that Hebgen Lake is outside of the park boundary uh, basically west northwest, but that's still part of the supervolcano. Now, okay, I saw that we just had an earthquake of 2.1 today, magnitude 7, right at the lake. Uh, I'm looking at the map right now, and uh, wow, it's uh, right on the Okay, it's over the caldera. It's at a depth of seven kilometers. So it's in the magma chamber. Okay, it's uh, basically north, uh, north of Norris Geyser Basin, and it's above the magma chamber. Uh, and we have had Montana quakes, 1.2 magnitude and uh, 1.4 magnitude. Uh, in the area where we've been having the earthquake swarms north of Bozeman in Manhattan, Montana. And also another one within the park area, West Yellowstone within the park area of about half a magnitude, depth of pretty deep, that's 11.34 kilometers depth. So those are the today's earthquakes and we'll look more into that in another video. 
I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.